Good day everyone. Today, I will share with you in how these waterfall animation works in this system. Let's take a look once again, let's activate any of this pump. When the pump is on, the water goes up. When done, the water fills the tank with at least 0.5 seconds delay before it falls. The waterfall looks realistic, it is a customized motion graphic animation. These animations create the illusion of motion. There are at least six different graphic images in this animation to create this kind of illusion. There are ready-made graphic images available in the toolbox that you can use in the WinCC graphic folder. If not available, you can create your own. How to create your own customized graphic animation in TIA Portal? The first step you must do is to search on the internet a GIF file format, similar like this. This is the GIF format that I will use for today's project, so let's focus here. Take your time to analyze the waterfall movement from top to bottom. You need to take at least 6 screenshot on your computer screen by pressing the print screen key on your keyboard. If Adobe Photoshop available in your PC it's better because you can do it more easily, otherwise you can also use Microsoft Paint for these project. Just copy only the portion of the image that you need for these project. Paste it on the other MS Paint window to finalize this image, especially the background which should match your HMI screen. Take at least 5 more screenshots on your PC, just follow the steps I did earlier. These are the 6 different screenshots I took earlier for these project. Edit these images, to make them more realistic, and make sure the background matches your HMI screen. Create separate individual files for these images, and make sure the position is almost the same. These are the graphic file format recognized in TIA Portal. You can use these external graphics format for the other project. Let's check the correct location of the folder where the graphics are placed, and then link this folder to the graphic toolbox. In the toolbox window of the graphics toolbox, click this folder to create link to graphic folder. Assign a name for the folder. Click this button to browse the correct path of the folder that you want to link. Then click OK button. And then click this OK button when done. These are the external graphic images that I explained earlier. The next step that you must do is to create a graphic list. To create a graphic list, double click text and graphics lists in the project navigation. Then open the graphics lists tab. Click add new, in the graphics lists table. The inspector window of the graphics list will open up. Assign a name to the graphics list that indicates its function. Select the value range graphics list type under selection, or just leave it like that. You can enter a comment for the graphics list if you want to. Select the first graphic that you want to use by drag and drop the objects from the toolbox to the graphic list entries. Change the default value, 0 will be our minimum range in these graphic list entries. Select the second graphic. Just follow the same step I did, the next value will automatically appear. Then select the third, the fourth graphic, this graphic image, and then the last graphic. The minimum value in these graphic list entries is 0 and 5 is the maximum. Copy the graphic list by pointing your mouse cursor on the left side of the graphic list, and then right click. Paste the graphic list on the HMI screen in the working area. Resize and align this graphic list to the working area inside of the tank to make it more realistic. When done, let's proceed on the next step. The third step that you must do is to create HMI internal tag. Let's add first new HMI tag table for this project. This will help you to organize your tag, and then rename the default name. Open the newly created tag table. And then click add new and also rename the default name. Click in the next column, select int means integer. Integer is a 16 bits data size, enough much for our example graphic list. In the next column, the connection must be internal tag. The fourth step that you must do is to configure a graphic list. Click the graphic list in the working area, and then click properties to open the properties window. Under general in the properties, change mode to output. For the process connection, click this box, and find the tag I created earlier. 
You can also create new tag here by clicking this add new button if you want to. And then click check button when done. The fifth step that you must do is to create HMI screen event. To create screen event, click the HMI screen in the working area, and then click properties to open the properties window. The functionality is a graphic list is implemented here. Click loaded in the events, click add function, and then type simulate tag without space and then press enter. Click this box, and find the tag I created earlier for this project. And then click check button when done. Let's change the default parameters. The maximum and the minimum value, check again the graphic list entries I did earlier. In this graphic list, 0 is our minimum and 5 is our maximum. Let's return back to the HMI working area. Again, 0 is our minimum, and 5 is our maximum. Cycle, the cycle defines when the tag value is changed by the specified value. The cycle is 1, just leave the default value, increasing the value will make your graphic animation slower. Value, the value by which the tag value is changed during each cycle. The value is 1, just leave the default value, changing this value may skip other graphic images. Let's save. Compile. And simulate this HMI screen. Let's see what will happen. It's perfect, everything's working as expected, but if you notice, the original sequence is that this waterfalls animation will only be shown when the first condition is fulfilled. The first condition is that the pump must be turned on, and then the water will flow through the pipe. When it reaches the end of the pipe, the first condition is complete. The next condition, the waterfall animation will appear with a 5 second delay before it completely falls. The final step is the PLC program code so that we can follow the conditions we mentioned earlier. Let's check the program code of the pipe water flow and waterfall animation of this pumping system. This is the ladder diagram of the pipe water flow animation in motor pump number 3. And this is the ladder diagram of the waterfall animation in this system. Let me explain with you how the PLC program works in this animation. Let's return back on the first animation. When the third pump is on, this contact closes. And then energizes TON timer number 3 coil. 7 seconds is the total process time value of the pipe water flow animation on the third pump. When done, the waterfall animation appear with time delay before it falls. When this PT expires, the output queue of timer number 3 will set to 1 and will energize. The output queue of timer number 3 has internal contact. When preset time expires, this timer internal contact will also set to 1. Let's restart the pump and observe the actual simulation. When the output queue contact of the third timer is closes, this will energize another timer coil which is timer number 4. We need at least 0.5 seconds delay before it completely drops the water. When this PT expires, the output queue of timer number 4 will energize another output coil and makes the waterfall visible. Let's change the PT value of the fourth timer to see the difference. Let's save the project and download the program and let's see what will happen. Just wait a moment. Click this button to overwrite the main program. When done, recheck the new preset time value of the third timer and start the simulation. Our new preset time value is 2 seconds, let's start the simulation and see the difference. Just wait a moment to complete the process time value of the pipe water flow animation. When done, the waterfall animation appear with 2 seconds time delay before it falls. And this is how the waterfall animation works in this system. Some of you are unfamiliar of the PLC program code. Let's add additional PLC code for the second screen. We will only focus on the, the waterfall animation PLC program. Before we start adding program code, let's create first new DB block for our tags. Some of my tags in the PLC and HMI tags in this system were established in the global data block. Now, we are creating new DB block. This will help me a lot to organize my tag. 
Standard address of the global data block it is often used in connection between CPU and HMI. Let's create new tags for the waterfall animation on the second screen. Let's add at least two tags for our additional PLC program code. The first tag will be used to make the waterfall appear. The second tag will be used for time delay. And make sure to select the correct data types. If you already familiar about this, just skip this part. This is only additional information in how the PLC program code works in this animation. Let's just duplicate this sequence. We will use the new tag we created earlier in the DB5. Let's insert another network here in this OB1 main organization block, so that we can start to write additional PLC program code for the second screen waterfall animation. Let's insert one normally open contact here. Let's go back on the first network to copy the data block tag of the third timer. When done, return back on the second network to paste the tag of the third timer. This timer has an internal output tag. We will use this tag instead of using another tag. To access IEC timer internal tag, just click the tag twice, and then press backspace in your keyboard, select the tag, and then select the type of internal tag that you want to access. Let's insert one TON on delay timer for the waterfall animation delay by drag and drop into the network of the block. Pressing OK button will automatically create a new data block. But in this presentation I will use my own data block tag that I created earlier on the DB5. To attach this tag into the network of the block, just click the tag and then drag and drop into the network of the instruction block. Let's put at least 2 seconds delay here. And let's insert a coil here. To attach this tag into the network of the block, just click the tag and then drag and drop. The PLC program code is ready to download, let's first attach the data block tag to our HMI tag by drag and drop. Previous software. The standard DB address was manually typed. In the TIA portal it's easy to do because it's just drag and drop. You can edit the description name if you want to. Let's change the acquisition cycle. Acquisition cycle is the update time of your HMI tag. Most of my HMI tags in this project I change the default value from 1 second to 100 milliseconds. It means the HMI tag will be updated every 100 milliseconds in the HMI. Let's save the project. Let's put another display animation of this waterfall graphic list. This waterfall graphic list will be visible when the waterfall appear tag is set to one or on. Let's save the project again. Let's do a little bit of adjustment of this waterfall graphic list. And let's set at least 3 second delay before the waterfall will be visible on the HMI screen. Let's save the project once again. And compile the program. Let's download the program to the 1200 PLC. Click the finish button when done. Let's simulate this HMI screen. Let's see what will happen. Let's energize the pump and wait a moment to complete the pipe water flow animation. When done, the waterfall animation appears with 3 seconds time delay before it falls. Let's check the PLC program code that we inserted earlier on network number 2. Let's simulate the HMI screen once again with PLC program code.
The waterfall animation appears with 3 seconds time delay before it falls. And this is how the waterfall animation works in this system. Hoping you learn something new today. Thank you for watching.